damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 318. We're in the second week of November of 2022. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about right here on the first and still the only wrestling podcast. Sorry for missing last week, everybody. Uh, My dog had a seizure. Uh, They don't know why. He has since gotten a clean bill of health. But uh, yeah, I spent three and a half hours at the vet uh, last week when we would normally be recording this. So (sighs) life's going great. Yeah, life does have a way of getting uh, getting in the way sometimes. So just glad that for the for the moment at least no no long term damage from the seizure nor any signs of like a a deeper problem uh for yeah. for, for for my nephew's health so yeah that's all that, that that's that's all that really matters at the moment indeed good times everybody all right so there's been a Saudi Arabia show since we last recorded there has been the build to the survivor series and the war games there's been the build to AEW full gear coming up. Let's start with WWE stuff, Crown Jewel. Uh, people seem to like this more than most of the Saudi shows. I only saw a little bit of it, as is tradition <laughs> with the Saudi Arabia shows, because there's always a giant New Japan show on the day of a Saudi Arabia show that requires my attention, and I fall asleep to... Uh, whatever's going on in the ring in Riyadh. And that happened again here. I did see some of Braun Strowman and uh, Omas saw them set the business back 35 years. And uh, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, what did you see a crowd jewel? What'd you like? What'd you d- dislike? Uh, well, if anything, I haven't gone back. That was the match I was most looking forward to uh, was Braun and Omas. I ha- I've still not seen that. I really, the only thing I saw was the, the opener and then the main event. So uh, I didn't. I didn't hear like rave reviews about anything else on the show. I know Bianca and Bailey had a gimmick match that people seemed to like. The I saw the golf cart sp- spot a lot. <laughs> yes, that looked very funny. But uh, I have not actually seen uh, most of the show. Uh, you know, it's like a televised house show still. But uh, people seem to really like that main event with uh, with Logan Paul and Roman Reigns, which is a really funny sentence to say. And, uh, you know, it was it was good. It was uh, for for somebody's third ever match. It's uh, it's a good example of something. And hopefully this will change now that uh, now that pop now that Paul is uh, is running the show. But it's something that I, I've often wished they would do with uh, their full time uh, folks when they when they bring them in, which is you don't uh, you build the match around what they can do well. And you don't ask them to do stuff they can't do well. And uh, Logan Paul's obviously very athletic, and he, you know, he did the he did the buckshot lariat. He did the better the big, hangman. Yeah, arguable, but yeah, I would say he had like a more explosive end to it. The thing with hangman's, I feel like, is the flip looks cool, but then he just kind of stops and then like moves forward to hit the clothesline. So there's like a weird stutter to it, where. Uh, I think Logan's was like, uh, you know, he like bounced out of the when he lands on his feet, he like bounces in right into the clothesline. So I do it's more I do, athletic. Yeah, yeah, it looked yeah, it looked awesome. Um, and then, of course, the 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 probably going to be like the most replayed thing from this match is the the selfie cam uh, Logan Paul doing the the frog splash through uh, uh, on Roman through the table. It was great. Uh, yeah, it was awesome. Um, he's very good at this um and it's another example of uh being maybe not a great person in your real life doesn't mean that you can't be talented at things and you know there's plenty of reasons to not like logan paul but uh you know he's he's good at this um he did end up tearing like every muscle in his leg <laughs> uh yep. as a result of this which i guess between him and punk that's that's the hangman's curse is even though <laughs> the move looked better when he did it uh the the revenge is that he his entire leg exploded but uh yeah it was uh it was probably on the upper echelon of the you know the very faint praise of it's probably the best saudi match 
that they've had since they started going over there, um, which most of them, most of the matches are bad or average. So, you know, having an actual good match on one of these shows is not a regular occurrence. So, hey, good for them. Coming out of that, they had a Monday Night Raw this week where they continued the build to the war games. They announced the five on five uh, women's match. Damage Control and Nikki Crows and a mystery partner against Asuka and Alexa and Bianca and two mystery partners. I think we're getting Sasha Banks return in Boston for the War Games. Very excited mm. about that. Uh, I think Candace is turning heel and uh, going to join the uh, the Damage Control team. We'll see how that goes. Maybe not. Um, a 24-7 title was thrown in the trash. <laughs> Austin Theory cashed in his money in the bank for a secondary championship and lost anyway. A lot coming out of Raw. Cashed it in during an open challenge. <laughs> True. He could have just challenged it. Instead, right. he wasted his money in the bank. Um, well, we can uh, talk about Survivor Series stuff later. This was uh, this was the end of, uh, of Austin Theory as a main eventer. Uh, at uh, you know, twenty three years old or whatever he is, uh, he's done. <laughs> yeah, and I know there's a lot of people being like, "Oh, you could send him back to NXT. You could, you can rebuild him as like a new character." I was like, "Nah." <laughs> and like, maybe, maybe Paul will be different, like we said. But historically speaking, when they do stuff like this to you, you that you're never. <laughs> They don't see you as a guy because they don't do this to people they think can be something. <laughs> no. So, so they uh, they killed him dead. And, you know, you you can try to WWE brain this and explain it. I was like, well, you know, he was never going to uh, he was never going to beat Roman Reigns. It's like, yeah, but he could still lose to the world champion. He could right. still have like cashed in for a pay-per-view match right. and lost or something like that. Yes. And maybe you turn a baby face out of that or something. Not that I don't know who would want to cheer him, but again, <laughs> there's a, there's things you could do if you're going to have him lose the briefcase shot, but not beat Roman Reigns. Instead, not only does he cash in on a secondary title nobody cares about, he lost after uh, Seth Rollins had been put through a table and and laid out viciously. So, you know, that's a, that's a pretty clear sign that they don't uh, they don't see him as anything special. And uh, perhaps wanted to just like put a little plant their flag that uh, just to remind you who's who's running the show now and uh, who isn't running the show anymore. You know, I've been listening to a lot of Jim Cornette lately. Uh Oh, no (laughs) sentence that starts that way ever (laughs) ends well. You know, of all the people in the world to be high on, he is high on Austin Theory. which. Was I kind of see it. <laughs> that's like well, his, that's his style of guy, like when he was running OVW, right? Yeah. As far as like a project and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. And he was like, you know, he's he's big. I don't think he's that big, but I think Cornette thinks he's big. Sure. Um, he's got the look. He looks to me like, you know, dollar store, dollar general John Cena mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. with really bad facial hair. His thing was like he does all the the little things right. He has good timing. He has good footwork. That's stuff that you know. After watching wrestling my entire life, I probably have picked up more than the average person. But we start talking about like footwork. It's like okay, that's above my pay grade. Like I, I don't mm-hmm. really, I don't really understand what you mean by that. <laughs> but uh, his thing was, uh, you know, they they just they wrecked him by putting him with Vince. Um. And but they they thought that they were like giving him the rub by putting him with Vince. Anyway, we went back and forth about this on the show when the theory thing, um, the theory experiment began and he was on a show. And then uh, immediately after uh, Vince died and uh, Triple H <laughs> took took over creative, he was on, like the first two weeks he was on every show, but he was getting beat on every show and it could have gone you could have viewed that a couple of ways. It could have been, well, this is their FU to Vince or they're still high on him, but they know he's been over pushed. 
and this is uh kind of an olive branch to the fans mm-hmm. i i think any any question about that is now is now over <laughs> after this week i think i think it's it was an fu to vince it was a complete burial. The thing I don't understand is they teased a couple of weeks ago on NXT that he's going to cash in on the NXT championship. Mm-hmm. Why not do that? Yeah, you <laughs> could still have him lose. Sure. But you you help make Braun Breaker a little bit stronger in 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 the in the process there. I don't know. I don't get it. Austin Theory not uh not by most accounts not a good person. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's young. Maybe he can go somewhere else and uh, and rehab his career. Uh, I I don't know where he goes from here. Maybe he can join the factory. Uh... <laughs> he does remind me of those guys. <laughs> yeah, he, he would fit in there. <laughs> he sure reminds me of those guys. Oh man! Uh, so WWE is building to the Survivor Series. What did you uh, think of? how they've uh, set up the war game so far. I mean, I'm, I felt a little bit more energized by this week's show on our, on our recent editions of this podcast. We've talked about how raw has felt pretty bland and yeah. holding patterny. Yes. And it's like, Oh my. And we talked about how it was clear that, well, we have to be in this holding pattern because this feud started in July and it's supposed <laughs> to last us until they do war games. And instead of doing war games when it's time to do war games, we're doing it because it's November. So it had to last for four months. So now that we're actually getting the pieces moving and setting things up, I'm uh, I feel a little bit more energized by it. I think the yeah, the women's match is shaping up. It's going to be just a ton of great workers in that match. And Alexa Bliss. Um, (laughs) I kid, I kid. She's okay uh (laughs) after all these years she's okay yeah yeah she's fine like (laughs) she's about as good of a wrestler as Britt baker is probably you know Mm, i think they have different strengths and weaknesses (laughs) yeah sure anywho let's not let's not compare (laughs) let's not compare women who are maybe or have in the past been over pushed by their companies and also aren't (laughs) very good in the ring well (laughs) We'll have plenty to say about Britt later, I'm sure, when we talk about uh, AEW (laughs) and uh, her upcoming match. But anywho, yeah, it's going to be a lot of good workers. And then I guess the interest would be, obviously, it's the bloodline on one side because they have five guys. You would think. So assuming they've worked it out where Roman will work two shows in a row. um, I'm pretty sure he's on Survivor Series. Yeah. Okay. So it's I that's the thing. It doesn't feel like I mean, you can just put together a string of baby faces that he's beaten already to do like the revenge. And then, well, we're not going to pin Roman, but we'll pin Sammy or whoever in it so that we try to rehab some of these baby faces or whoever's going to wrestle Roman at Royal rumble can pin Sammy or solo Sokoa or whoever. Right. Um, So it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't, I just don't know what you, what you do with it. It's like, you got, you got, you got some guys like, you just did Usos versus Brawling Brutes and they did an injury angle so Sheamus could go get married. You could, you know, have Sheamus and, and his guys and then two other guys, I guess. But... The, the Brutes and the New Day, if you want. Yeah, you could do that. They are doing Usos and New Day on SmackDown this week for the titles as the, the deal being that the Usos are about to break the New Day's record. It's like, it's so funny to me because that demolition <laughs> record lasted for like... <laughs> 20 years and now it's going to be broken twice within like a five-year period yes it's just it's it's not bad necessarily i mean i don't i haven't been enthralled with this usos title reign because i think their matches are kind of boring yes um but you know it's not it's not necessarily a bad thing that they're going to break this record it's just interesting like the tag titles generally because it's an under push division the only exciting thing you can do with it is change the titles <laughs> Correct. So the fact that they've kept them on this one team for like two years now is it's and for for the second time in in the, or in uh, in a relatively short amount of time is uh, is kind of interesting. Yes, that is that is in fact accurate. So we'll find out more about Survivor Series, I'm sure, after SmackDown this week. I am going to a concert 
<laughs> and I'm going to miss most of SmackDown. I will watch it later. What is he always? They spell uh, always with two V's instead of one W in the middle. Oh, is it an S on the end or do they use the Z? It, it's an S. Okay. Okay. They're uh, quirky Canadian lads and lasses. Okay. Love those guys. New album. Not really my jam, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but uh, the previous uh, two albums, uh, just fantastic stuff. Concert begins. It is being held at a venue called the 930 Club. Ooh, yeah. Folks in the area will uh, be familiar. Legendary venue in the area. Starts at 10 p.m. And there's an opener. Oof. (laughs) What? (laughs) That's too rich for my blood. (laughs) What? (laughs) Why does it start at 930, first of all? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Second of all... (laughs) Why is there an opener at 10 p.m.? Yeah, you would think if it was going to start at like, you know, eight or nine, maybe there would be an opener. And then the main the main show goes on at 10. But uh, wow, that's yeah. a, that's a time commitment. Yeah. What do you know about that? Like, I don't care. I'm up till 7 a.m. every day anyway. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's got nothing to do with anything. Oh, let's see here. Um, so that's WWE stuff. Uh, NXT, uh, they're kind of loaded up next week's show for some reason. Um, I think Mandy is defending the women's title against Elbow Fire. Uh, um, what a terrible name. <laughs> she also can't say it. <laughs> She's Another also one of those. she's also Scottish, like Nikki Crows, <laughs> and they've given both of these women names that they cannot say. <laughs> Elbow fire, uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, the bronze defending the men's title against uh, a trained son. So there's that. Sure, that's, that's forehead guy, right? Yes. All right. Yeah. That's good. Good. Uh, the kid but... with the big head. Right. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that'll. I mean, that'll be fun, right? Two two big fellas throwing each other around. That could be a fun match. Braun doesn't have bad matches. Mm-hmm. Like they're not great, but it's just it's like it's like Prime Goldberg stuff almost. Mm-hmm. You know, like he doesn't really know what he's doing. He's kind of wild and out of control, but it all feels kind of real. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, I like Braun. It's, it's a bit good. like watching a gorilla have a wrestling match. <laughs> And you're like theoretically he knows what to do and he probably <laughs> won't go insane and kill the person he's in there with because they practice a lot but like it could happen <laughs> Ted the wrestling bear yes <laughs> those poor wrestling bears man oh, horrible they do they a dark de- side of the ring on that they would declaw them they would take all their teeth out oh. mm. Rent Peta. Oh, Peta needs to look into <laughs> wrestling bears. <laughs> Is there still a wrestling bear somewhere in this country? I'd like to think so. It feels like something that would still be tried in Tennessee. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Definitely Memphis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Lawler probably wrestled one last year. <laughs> right. <laughs> he works that Tennessee Mississippi loop. Uh- <laughs> Oh. Still go every weekend and see Jerry Lawler wrestle and throw drop kicks. Insane. <laughs> Somewhere between Tennessee and Mississippi every single weekend. It always reminds me of your shtick about when you visited Minnesota for the first time and you're like, these people, it makes sense to you why Vern Gagne <laughs> was on top until he was like 60. Yes. You're like, that's I think that's just the the Tennessee, Mississippi. Jerry Lawler is the wrestler. Yes. And we don't need any other wrestlers <laughs> to go to go and see because we have Jerry Lawler. Correct. Yes. Instantly understood within an hour of being in Minnesota how Bringanya <laughs> <laughs> lasted on top for so many years. All right. Uh speaking of Memphis, Jeffrey Jarrett has j- joined AEW. <laughs> it's immediately become my favorite AEW wrestler. Mm-hmm. I was uh, we didn't do a show last week, as mentioned. I was live in attendance for Mr. Jarrett's big debut. How did that go? Uh, I would 
he got more of a reaction than when they took off the mask of the fake sting and it was the guy who was on NXT and got fired and now is in the factory. Yes. Um, he did get a bigger reaction than that guy. Um, Every, everybody on the show got a bigger reaction than that. Nobody knows who that is. True. True. Um, I was like, because then when Jarrett came out, I was like, was that like Jeff Jarrett's son? Is Jeff Jarrett's <laughs> son a wrestler? Like he's old <laughs> enough where he could conceivably have an adult son. Jeff's Jeff's son is Kurt's son. <laughs> <laughs> oh right, yeah. <laughs> who is who is going to be a wrestler at some point? I'm sure. Of course, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was. It was. It was interesting. I mean, it was. It was just like watching. It was funny because I was there with my friend. I was there with two friends. My one friend watches AEW every week. Pretty much the only wrestling he watches at this point. Fair uh, enough. Our, our other friend does not watch wrestling, but he came to the show with us in May and had a good time. <laughs> So he came back for this interesting. one. Interesting. And when Jeff Jarrett came out, I just my my friend who watches AEW, he got into wrestling through New Japan. Uh-huh. And, uh so this he, is Benny Omega. This is Benny Omega. <laughs> and uh and uh he, he so he doesn't know any like I mean he watched a little bit of WCW when he was little so he knew like Goldberg and Sting, but he doesn't he doesn't have a lot of like knowledge of wrestling before 2016. <laughs> Interesting. So they're like not completely confused as to what's happening. And then Jeff, I see a man in a cowboy hat walking through the crowd. And I'm like, that's Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> and I start going, oh, my God, that is Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> and they both turn and look at me and then turn back to the crowd because they don't know who Jeff Jarrett is. <laughs> and then he gets in the ring and he hits Darby Allen with a guitar. And I go. I can't believe I'm watching this. <laughs> and they're both like, I, we, we don't know what's going on. <laughs> and then he cuts his promo about how he hates AEW and he hates the fans and he hates the people in production who I guess used to work for. <laughs> we're supposed to know because the people in production AEW, a lot of them used to work in TNA. Right. So Jeff knows them by name. Uh, like we're ugh, what a stupid it what a stupid <laughs> promo and then he and then he and then he finishes it off he's doing this heel promo and he got like some heat for it when he started going after the fans but <laughs> he can't help himself so he has to end it with his catchphrase and say choke on that slap nuts like we're watching thunder in the year 2000 and i just i was like i can't believe it <laughs> I can't. Be- I, I was just like beside myself and they were both like, I we didn't understand any of that. What was that about? <laughs> and then I have to explain. Jeff Jarrett is a man. He keeps getting hired for some reason, and it's not because of his hair. And he's he just he will not. I was explaining the trajectory of like he used to work for Impact. Then he got fired from that. Then he somehow ended up in WWE, became an executive in that company. But then Vince got fired. So he got fired. Well, he got fired once, then brought back in a higher position, then yes. got fired again. And now he's in AEW as an executive and a, a television performer. Uh, trying to explain the career of Jeff Jarrett in a thir- in like a 30 second window uh, was... It was a very overwhelming experience for me is what I'm saying, because I was trying to process this as someone who knows who Jeff Jarrett is. Right. And then I also had to try to condense Jeff Jarrett's entire tra- career trajectory into a 20 second explainer for my friends who didn't know who he was. So it was overwhelming for me to answer this question in the most long, <laughs> long winded way possible. You had to explain Jeff Jarrett to Jeff Jarrett virgins. <laughs> I, what do you know? Yeah. Yeah. What do you know about that? Um, so look, Jeff is an executive. I understand. Like maybe I don't understand because it's not like TNA did Bafo house show business, but mm-hmm. there's certainly value that Jeff Jarrett could bring. I would assume as someone who's done every job in the wrestling business, but Jeff Jarrett on TV, uh, I don't know. Like I said, he's my favorite wrestler all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> at least in AEW. He's my favorite AEW wrestler. Um, so I hope he and uh, 
lethal against Sting and Darby at the pay per view next week is good. <laughs> That's good. It's gonna be Sting and Darby's greatest greatest challenge since coming into this company and becoming the best team in the whole company is can they get an interesting match, a good match out of Jay Lethal? Uh, going to be, well, not a good match, but you know what I mean. Like Jay Lethal has technically good matches that are not very interesting all the time. So can they have an interesting match with Jay Lethal and Jeff by God, Jarrett? Yeah, we will certainly find out. So AEW... they will they will do the spot where Sting gets hit with the guitar and no sells it and the crowd will lose their minds for that. So maybe it's worth it for that for them to do a redo of the spot they did in TNA 16 years ago. <laughs> sure, why not? AEW has their pay-per-view next weekend. They announced 700 things on TV this week. The title eliminator tournament continues. Boy, all the stars are here for this <laughs> title eliminator tournament. The finals will be at full gear, so we don't really need to discuss that yet. John Moxley versus MJF. MJF has not been on TV in the build, the last build to this pay per view because he's been busy shooting that Von Erichs movie where they pump the actors full of. <laughs> PEDs to make them look exactly like the Von Erichs in the 80s. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just I I can't wait. I don't know what kind of cash like Zac Efron has as a star sure. at this point, but like there's going to be regular normal people who like him that will go see this movie or will at least watch a trailer. Right. And they're going to be like, oh my, because the pictures leaked online this week and everybody was kind of making fun of it because he has the, the Von Erich hairstyle. Um. But it's like when you see the first trailer for this or God forbid you go see this movie not knowing what the Von Erich story is. Yes. It's going to be harrowing <laughs> for a lot of people, I think. Uh, I just wonder, I don't know how much input the family has in this movie. Um, our friend Gibby said that I guess Kevin's been in contact with the producers of the film, but I guess hasn't directly, he isn't on set or anything. So I'm like, because I really think if you're going to tell the story of the Von Erichs, you need to hammer home what a freaking psychopath Fritz Von Erich was. And well, I just and I don't know if the Hollywood version will do it justice. It, it is. I don't expect a burial of Fritz. I do expect. That they'll pretty much tell the truth. And uh, I pretty much it's going to be built around Kevin because he's alive. Mm -hmm. right it's the only like sliver of of happy ending you can put on a movie like that when you're doing the post credits explaining what happened to the real people thing right right so you show you know old man zach efron in hawaii with his boys the way that they did on that uh dark side of the ring episode with kevin and his kids and mm -hmm. <laughs> in hawaii that's the, that's the closing shot um yeah but that's a heck of a thing what a story <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be i i will be curious i i'm resistant to like going i guess because i spend so much time watching wrestling i don't necessarily want to watch like wrestling media a lot like sure. you know, movies about wrestling or you know i really liked arrow but i have pretty much no interest in watching that Stephen amell show about wrestling yeah um so this will this will be an interesting test and I, like i'm not like super well versed in in the world class stuff i think i watched that wwe documentary that they put out years ago um so i'm aware of like the big broad strokes of it and kind of the reputation that fritz had he won like most disgusting promotional tactic in the observer awards like six years running or something <laughs> like that so i'm i'm aware of the broad strokes of the story but like i i would maybe be curious to check this out but uh yeah i'll i'll be curious to see what the finished product looks like yeah so mjf can't uh can't do the paper can't can't do the build to the pay-per-view because he's busy um okay fine <laughs> whatever i assume he's being moxley next week yeah i guess like <laughs> I, I think people like Moxley, but I don't feel like him as champion is doing anything for you right now. And if MJF loses again, it's like, all right, what, you, you build him up for another year 
to to win the belt or whatever. Right. I, I don't know. I think I yeah, I think you just do it. And if it wears off and people aren't cheering him, you can turn him heel or you could take the belt off of him in January or whatever. Um, seems like which well, I don't know. They're they're pushing that the the after the pay-per-view feud is MJF versus Stokely's guys. Yeah. So and you have whatever the, the winter is coming show in December, which will be like three weeks after this. So yeah, probably Ethan page maybe wins the title shot and, and goes and, and that, faces Max that, for the belt that that shows in the uh, Dallas Fort Worth uh, Metroplex there. And I, th- I assume Ricky Starks is going to get that title shot. Oh, well, yeah, that could work too. Being the local boy. Um, yeah. Um, to your point, business is down. <laughs> business is down across the board mm-hmm. is it gonna be yeah i mean they did 45 to 4800 the first time they were in baltimore and the second time they did tw- five months later they did 2400 yeah <laughs> like that may be an anomaly like i don't think it was as bad like this past week when they went to boston but they are not doing well the second or third times in a market maybe because they only run uh, 20 cities <laughs> yeah I mean, and, and, you, and you think about with in the case of baltimore they were just in dc like three weeks ago correct and they yes. were in philly not too long ago before that so correct. like you're it's not just the cities which yes they are hitting a lot it's the the overall market is so it's so regionally specific they hit they hit florida they hit philly dc they hit you know they hit boston and they hit a bunch of places in Texas. It's like, and those are their, <laughs> that's their loop, so to speak. And I know they're doing some West coast stuff and they're going to go to the UK next year. And they'll probably have really nice, you know, it advances on, on, especially on those UK shows. But uh, yeah, it's like when you go, when you're going to the same towns and more importantly, probably the same regions f- four and five and six times a year, like it's going to, it's going to hurt you. And I don't, again, I don't think that's John Moxley's fault, but it's, it, he isn't, he isn't pulling people in either. So Mac, uh, you know, MJF feels like the hottest star that you have. Um, so just, just go with it until somebody else seems hotter, I guess. The problem is he's the greatest heel of his generation and he's going to be a baby face. Do you feel like this could maybe this is like a this is like a Dwayne 98 wow. where like you have to turn him baby face now because the crowd wants to cheer him so bad. But then like three or four months from now, when the novelty is wearing off, then you can turn him back. And that's where you really get like the money out of him. Maybe maybe so. Maybe so. He's also good enough of a promo that maybe he can get people to hate him somehow anyway. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, and just once, as you said, like for the once the story is over, uh, he can he can heal on the people, and he's good enough that it will take. But we'll see. Uh, Soraya is back. Soraya, mm-hmm. Soraya, Soraya. She she's says cleared Soraya now. Yes, she's cleared. She's gonna wrestle Britt Baker. At full gear next Saturday. You know, I I could be wrong, but I really think she's going to get booed. <laughs> um, and I don't think that promo they did on Dynamite this past week was a good idea. <laughs> I think the promo they should have done is you have Shivani or Renee out there and she just announces that she's cleared and you let the whole promo be about that and let people cheer that. And then at the end of the segment, you announce the match and Britt comes out on the stage and just kind of stares at and you do the stare down. Um, Instead, what they did was she announces the promo, which uh, that she's cleared at the start of her promo. And then she goes on a rave about how Britt isn't a star because she hasn't been the places that uh, Soraya has been, um, which is a heel promo when everybody else cuts it in this company. Um, yes. but we're supposed to cheer Soraya or Soraya for, for saying it. Um, she also did a, the, the Hogan esque claiming that she's <laughs> sold out the Tokyo dome. Yes. Um, she's wrestled in sumo hall 
but uh, not not to do yes. with She did correct herself on on. She Twitter, clarified, but, yes, but mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, it was funny in the moment because people were kind of with her on on the first two, and then she said the Tokyo Dome, and it just fell silent. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, uh, and then on the other hand, you also have uh, uh, Britt Baker who. Um, is not going to give anybody no quarter is given when she is cutting a promo on you and she is going to make sure that Britt Baker is the most over person in the segment when it's done and uh, you know she did heal on the fans a little bit and like I said I, I, I think this could work but I think we've seen it more and more increasingly uh, the, the the Ruby Soho Chris Statlander match uh coming to mind immediately which is that when you have someone point out that this person is a wwe or or an outsider of any kind and they're coming in to wrestle a a homegrown and take a spot from a homegrown talent uh that's that makes the fans that are paying to see the you know (laughs) where the homegrown talent was uh was born uh they want they want to cheer for that talent they don't really want to cheer for the the invader uh even if even if the invader is supposed to be the baby face so uh questionable tactics of putting them face to face i think especially this week when you probably could have had a really positive home run of a segment if it's just her being genuinely emotional and announcing that she's back and that she's going to be you know wrestling for the first time in six years or whatever Fair enough. Jade Cargill versus Nyla Rose for the TBS title is happening at full gear. Jade Cargill is the undefeated TBS champion. Nyla Rose has a TBS title belt and has proclaimed herself the TBS champion. And uh, th- that's the feud. Mm-hmm. Doesn't not light my world on fire. It's four it's, away it's, from. Yeah, it's Go interesting ahead. in the sense that this is the first time in like six months that Jade has wrestled like someone that actually feels like a real character on the show. Yes. Instead of like Marina Shafir or Diamante or somebody. (laughs) So you're like, I don't think Nyla is going to beat her, but you know, Nyla was like one of the first women's world champions in the promotion. And she's been around since day one. So you're like, I it's at least mildly conceivable that she could beat Jade here, as opposed to it being another two minute match that nobody cares about. Cause nobody thinks Jade is losing to sky blue. I, I, it's conceivable. There's a chance. I do not see it that way at all, but I'm not, your opinion is valid. I I just don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't believe for a second that Jake Cargill is going to lose anytime in the near future. But like I said, I just think putting her against real actual people who get TV time is better than putting her against people that only sure. wrestle on dark and then show up to lose to her. Oh, no argument. No. Four away for the ROH title, Jericho versus Danielson versus Claudio versus Sammy. I don't know what this is leading to. Maybe Danielson and Jericho at uh, the Ring of Honor pay-per-view the ne- next month. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe that... Jericho and Claudio again. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah I I I figured it was it was Jericho Claudio at this show and then going to be Danielson Jericho in December but I guess they can still do that because Jericho can pin Claudio or Sammy I guess and then you still have Danielson versus Jericho to go back to but I also figured because the whole thing was that Garcia cost Danielson the uh, the match in Toronto that maybe Danielson was going to wrestle Garcia at this show but they're not doing that so. <laughs> Um, shows Garcia not on the show me. this week. No, not even not even really talked about. He was like the main guy in the storyline. <laughs> he was the star of AEW for a month. That's right, and uh, and now <laughs> now Sammy's in there for some reason. Uh, you know that's fine. Hey, if Sammy wins the ROH title, maybe he'll be on AEW television less. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, since there's no signs that ROH is going to be its own thing anytime soon. No, yeah, it's. I mean, hey, <laughs> it you know it it could happen. Fingers crossed. But uh, yeah, Sammy's 
look, Sammy and Danielson had a really good match this week. Um, I didn't think it was quite as good as their first match, but uh, it's good. And uh, I was struck watching it that uh, all those other Blackpool Combat Club guys got to stop doing the elbows and uh, and the stomps that Danielson does because no one else does them right. <laughs> Um, so I like the idea of continuity and move sets between the factions, but uh, pick something else, please. That's fair. Also at full gear, the acclaimed versus Swerve in our glory, the third match in their trilogy. The acclaimed are really, really over. Sure, are. and and Swerve and Keith are doing this sting. Uh, Lex Luger thing as a tag team mm-hmm. where uh, Swerve's a heel, Keith's a baby face and Keith either has to turn heel and join Swerve on the dark side or they will split and uh, I feel like maybe they will go heel Keith will go heel I don't think it's the right time to the acclaimed are so over. I don't think it's the right time to beat them, but mm-hmm. maybe they, maybe they, maybe they will. Yeah, it's any I, number of a thousand things could happen. <laughs> what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, no, I mean, I I have been leaning towards the idea that they're going to turn Keith, maybe just because they've gone so hard in the other direction. Um, but I, I wouldn't. I don't think Keith Lee should be a heel because I think he's one of the most likable people in professional wrestling. <laughs> um, but the, hey, you need <laughs> you need. I guess you need a certain amount. If the claimed are going to be champions for a while here, and FDR are baby faces and the Bucks are baby faces, you're going to need uh, and whoever else you got. They they broke up a lot of tag teams this year. <laughs> um. Then hey, you need you need heel teams, and you know, ironically, turning the team that already wrestled them three times is kind of a weird choice. But <laughs> theoretically, yeah. it would freshen them up. If I mean, I would lay off it for a month or two, but you could theoretically go back to it with them as full with Keith as a full heel, um, or they could win the titles, uh, of course, and that that could also <laughs> change things. But uh, sure, yeah, uh, I like I said, I wouldn't turn Keith heel, but I feel like that's probably where it's headed, just because of how heavy-handed the television has been saying that it's going the other way. That's fair. And the only match we haven't covered coming up on Full Gear, Tony Storm versus Jamie Hayter for the interim women's world title. Jamie Hayter is really over. Tony Storm's really good and over, but not as over as Jamie is right now. Um, I don't know if it's time to put the belt on Jamie. I wouldn't argue for or against it really at this point. It's like, but yeah, uh, we were discussing this off air and you laid out a nice scenario. I thought, yeah, I think, I think it is time to turn Jamie hater, regardless of what you do. But my thought of how you get there is you probably have uh Soraya or Soraya beat Brit earlier in the night. And then you have Brit either on purpose or on accident costs Jamie the title match later in the night. And uh, and that leads to you, you pulling the trigger on the breakup angle. And so that takes care of them. And then Tony can keep, uh, you know, defending the belt and, and wrestling on TV until. Uh, wonder how wonder how that back injury is going for uh, <laughs> for Thunder Rosa. She sure seems to make a lot of public appearances, but uh, you know, that doesn't mean <laughs> you're not doesn't mean you can wrestle. I'm not uh, I'm not implying anything by that, but uh, she's expected back any month now. OK. <laughs> It could be November. It could be January. (laughs) It could be next October, but she will be back at some point in a month. One of these months, she'll be back. (laughs) And I guess they shot it. They shot an angle for uh, Wardlow versus Samoa Joe versus powerhouse Hobbs Mm -hmm. um, on on TV this week. I presume that's happening at full gear. And then maybe again in some form or fashion at the ROH pay-per-view the following month, but they haven't announced anything yet. It was a great classic TNA production team moment, though, when they missed <laughs> Samoa Joe hit, turning on Wardlow and hitting him with the belt. The camera was on Powerhouse Hobbs as Samoa Joe uh, turned on his tag team partner of three weeks, Wardlow. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and hit him with a belt shot. Just a classic. It's so funny because they even had like a split screen view like a yes. couple seconds before that where they were showing both Wardlow and Hobbs. And if you yep. had just kept it on that, it would have been, I mean, it would still the impact probably would have been less than if we were, if half the screen was taken up by, uh, by powerhouse Hobbs, but it would have been better if we had at least seen the impact. Instead, we see Joe start to run towards Wardlow and then it cuts to Hobbs and the crowd starts buzzing and then they cut back and, and Wardlow's on the ground. So yeah, very, very classic, uh, classic TNA moment there. And I, I don't know why we're in such we were in such a rush to do the, the Joe turn. Like it was obvious it was coming because why else would you put these two big, big dudes together if you weren't going to turn them on each other eventually? But um, I don't know why I, I figured you would do Wardlow and Hobbs at the pay-per-view and then maybe afterwards you 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 turn Joe. But yeah, maybe maybe their logic is you you have Wardlow win this. And then you do a rematch for Joe's belt at the at the ROH show or something, and Joe wins that, and then you have like a rubber match somewhere. I don't know. I I don't know either. And uh, people will be like, "Oh, Tony's the Booker of the Year," and uh, hey, Joe was looking sideways at Wardlow on Rampage the week before. Mm-hmm. So this is long term storytelling. Sure, it's like it was it was one segment one week before. Mm-hmm. I I don't think it was. I, I don't think it was good. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, I mean, Joe's a really good heel and sure. Oh, I got no problem with that's the, the, where you want to go eventually. Right. Sure. But yes, as far as like I said, I expected this to be built up because, yes, I saw that that bit on Rampage. Um, well, I saw it on Twitter. I didn't I didn't watch. The, <laughs> I watched the Shibata match. Oh, by the way, Katsuyori Shibata came back and had a wrestling match since we lasted the show. Uh, <laughs> but he wrestled the pockets guy. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. But uh, but that's not important. We're talking about Samoa Joe. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yes, I like I saw the segment, so I figured it was coming, but I did not expect it three days later on a dynamite kind of out of nowhere. But, you know, that's what they did. So we'll 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 see how that how they deal with it, even if the, the beginnings were uh, poor. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, is there anything else that you would like to uh, do? Japan uh, did a show. <laughs> there you go. Not not a hot promotion. Shooter is back. He's uh he's challenging for the IWGP United States title at the Stardom New Japan crossover show uh, coming up uh, next weekend. That does uh, look like it'll be a fun show. Like I'll probably oh. watch that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I ha- I mean, I have to watch it. I don't know <laughs> what. I don't know if I would watch it for whatever the price tag is. I don't know off the top of my head what the price what the price tag is because it's not just regular uh, New Japan World. It's New Japan World pay per view, so it's probably you know twenty, thirty, forty bucks, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. There's so much stuff, man. <laughs> There's so much stuff. But yeah, Shooter's back, so good good for them. And uh, Osprey and uh, Naito had a really nice match on that show. All right, now, now, is there anything else you want to talk about? No, that's, that. I think that's about covers it. I am I am in the second week of recovering from witnessing <laughs> the returns of Jeff Jarrett and Katsuyori Shibata live and... Uh, and uh, I, I think we, we made it through to the other side of uh, another one of these. All right. Well, until next time, everybody, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Bye bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. This is a uh, this is a momentous occasion. Let me uh, let me crack open my last Coke Energy. Ah, gonna <laughs> gonna go make a compilation audio and set it to uh, leave the memories alone. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, we decided today's the day. It's the last one. Thursday, <laughs> November 10, 22. This was the day that you needed that one last <laughs> Coca-Cola flavored yep. energy. The expiration date on the bottom of the can is listed as April 4th, 2022. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. It tastes uh, fine. Yeah, no. Soda doesn't go bad, really, right? At worst, it loses its fizz, right? Right. Right. That's that's always what I've been under the impression of. <laughs> well, it doesn't turn into poison. Right. On, on April 5th, you know? Right. Any uh, any election thoughts? Um, I guess broadly speaking, it's good <laughs> that they're only going to probably lose the house. Um, all right, that's it. What I mean, I, it was fascinating to me, and I don't go out of my way to see that stuff. But you know, clips clips filter in, and it was like the way Republican pundits reacted to this was like, it was like, you would have thought they lost ground. Like, I guess they were just really convinced they were taking both and it was going to be this great repudiation of the student debt relief. And (laughs) yes. And, and uh, you know, whatever they hit the things that Republicans always hit in a midterm election when they're not controlling the presidency, right? It's crime. It's, gas prices it's it's all that so they did the right. things they always do plus they sprinkled in lots of culture war you know panic about trans people and whatever so they they did their part and it it did not result in like a complete dramatic uh you know it wasn't anything really resembling i think i think in 18 the democrats picked up like 40 some seats in uh, in congress and took the house back in of course there's like the 2010 one uh there was uh like they the republicans won like 60 seats and took six senate races and won both houses so i guess if you were expecting that seismic change then i can see why that would be disappointing to you but uh, as, as it stands it's like i don't does it feel like the gameplay the, the game plan changed any for for that side of the aisle like they got two more years to hit crime and borders and all the stuff they always hit and maybe you could say well the the people that i mean like the the dr oz race a lot of national right wing media attention was put on that and he still lost maybe because they ran the tv quack who doesn't live in the state. I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe that was a bad idea, but um, yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Like the only thing that's mildly interesting is I think if there's now like going to be a little bit of a splinter where people are going to have to put down their flag on either the, the boring fashy side of De- of the DeSantis Republicans or the the Trump flavor, like that's maybe the most interesting thing coming coming out of it. Because yeah, Trump was. I mean, he wasn't like hitting the campaign trail super hard, but he <laughs> endorsed a lot of candidates who lost. Um, yeah. So if 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 the the regular slimeball Republicans feel like this is their time to to come back out of the woodwork and and try to make a challenge, uh, because they think if he runs in twenty twenty four, they'll they'll lose um this that's maybe the most interesting like that's the best bullet they have in their chamber is hey we we made ourselves the party of trump and even though biden is not you know is not popular with any side of the aisle we didn't get the big crushing wins that we were that we were promised so we need to go we need to go more boring with our (laughs) with our pick in 24 maybe that's the most interesting like political stuff coming out of it but like if you're an actual real person who looks at this in the way that affects normal people lives it's like hey you know weed was legalized in a couple of states you had a lot of you know some good referendums passed you know some 
a lot of seats were picked up as far as like like governorships changed from from dem to you know dem to or from republican to dem and stuff like that a lot of local elections seemed to break left and there was also like the the percentage points that they that the democrats won young young people it was like almost 30 percent which to tell you like the most re- reliable voting block for republicans is obviously elderly people and that right. breaks and that breaks like 13 or 14 points usually so the fact that democrats not only obviously they're going to win with younger people but they won it by like 30 points is like that i think tipped the scale and i think you can look at that and go hey it turns out like access to abortion is pretty important to a lot of people <laughs> Like and and free and and you know and and fair elections that that was pretty important to people and that was enough to get young people in large numbers young people who vote Democrat in large numbers to go out for a midterm that they might have otherwise stayed home for so congratulations we pushed off the absolute worst case scenario for about another two years. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have to cram last minute anymore. Last minute got moved to tomorrow. <laughs> it's going, everything's going great. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Like I said, I think there's, if you're like, it wasn't the absolute worst it could have been. That's true. <laughs> that is, that is the most positive I am willing to be about, about it from a, uh, you know, an actual real person standpoint. I, I didn't, watch any of the coverage as it was happening i uh i think it's just still happening <laughs> yeah i mean it still is but uh i just it it hurts my brain <laughs> to look at it in that way so i i checked a few times to see who was winning and then on on my phone but i didn't watch i didn't have i didn't subject myself to like the weird map guy on MSNBC. Oh, or... that guy can go straight to hell. <laughs> <laughs> or any of that stuff this year. I uh I kept my 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 brain cable news free and uh I feel I feel much the better for it. I had <sighs> election night and I uh had to watch NXT. Mm-hmm. Uh but was flipping around after and it's like you flip over to cnn and and there's 700 there's mr charisma jake tapper and mr <laughs> charisma john king standing at their board and they're just i mean like saying that cnn has the best le- election night coverage is like saying uh tallest short person <laughs> but they probably did because NBC and MSNBC, you have the weirdo with the <laughs> board and the khaki pants, and mm-hmm. <laughs> NBC News, you got stupid effing Chuck Todd oh. and his horrible facial hair. The worst. And CBS has seven hundred people at the desk, and not even tempted to flip to Fox. <laughs> it's none of it's none of it is good. Uh, I guess I should make us an Instagram. <laughs> feels feels kind of late, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, feels uh. Feels dire on that side. <laughs> I think In it's a little ways than it traditionally does. <laughs> I should. Yeah. Clarify. I try to keep on keeping on